All right, guys. Well, what I'm actually doing here is building a wall. Uh, I'm actually lining the wall here with uh, timber panels, plywood panels, exactly the same as what I've done over there already. And um, I basically have started in that corner over there, and I'm just going to work my way around, all the way around. And then I'm going to move all of this stuff out of the way and line right down to that corner there. Um, I finished that wall a couple of months ago. This one though, because I actually have to pull pull the, the wall out a bit, because I want to run it right up into here so that it covers up that truss and uh, it just gives a nice neat finish up there. But it also works out that by doing that, it goes 2.4 meters down, which is the length of the sheet, and it'll sit virtually right about here on the, you know, just slightly above the floor, which is perfect because I'll have these battens stuck there it'll basically sit on the front of that there'll be a slight gap below there but that doesn't matter because it's all be behind the bench anyway you're not even going to see it what it means though is i don't have to cut the sheets so i can literally use the full sheets um 2.4 meters high 1.2 meters wide i'll just need to cut the, the cutouts up here around these uh these bearers and um that's pretty easy. All that power has come off of there and getting replaced with a new new cable will run right along here behind the, the uh, battens. So that's basically the plan. Um, so far I've just gotten started sticking the, the spaces on the wall. Okay. So after removing the old shelving and brackets, I'm using liquid nails to attach the plywood spaces to the bricks. I've marked out on the wall where they all need to go to line up with the battens which are spaced evenly in the centre and either side of the plywood sheets. They don't have to be super strong, it's just tacking them in place because ultimately they're going to have a, an anchor bolt going straight through them into the brick and that's going to be the thing that does all the work. This is just to hold them in place temporarily while I get everything else organised. These pieces of ply are actually offcuts from the ceiling panels and the wall panels from the first wall. I'm using two different thicknesses to get the exact spacing from the wall. Next step is to stick these thinner ones over the top. So that's them all on there now. And that's what the battens will all get attached to, which will be the next step. So essentially along the bottom there, these these are like a bottom plate. They'll run along that line of bricks. And you see it, it's actually the floor's not dead straight. It angles downwards and that sort of straightens out as it gets further down there. But these will get screwed with uh, anchors into the brick through the, through the spaces. And that'll be the bottom plate that the ply will attach onto. So that's it. That's the stage finished now. I'm just gonna leave all this overnight to dry. So it's really solid. And um, so that when I'm drilling in through this, it's, they're not spinning and moving around. Cause if, like, if I do it now, that's what's gonna happen. All right guys, well, this is the uh, next step in the process. Um, I've just lightly screwed these studs onto the wall here, these uh, battens. And just to hold them in place, basically. They're all measured out and I've got two at the end here because the the last panel comes to about here and then I just need to put a little spacer in there to fill it out. Um, yeah, so they're just tacked in basically with with uh, screws. You can see we've got the bottom plate along there. And this is now the fascia. Um, that's not quite perfect, but near enough. That the um, plywood, 12 mil plywood sheets will now be attached to. Before I attach the, the plywood sheets, I'm going to dynabolt these to the wall. Um, I'll put probably three bolts in each stud and you know half a dozen across the bottom so it's firmly held on I wouldn't trust the uh, liquid nails to hold all this on the wall it's just there basically it's just tacking it all in place as much as this framework isn't particularly heavy um, the plywood sheets are heavy they're about 20 kilos a sheet and we've got five of them so you're talking about a couple of hundred kilos of um, uh, no you're not you're talking about a hundred kilos of, of plywood sheets and then there's going to be shelving up here as well. And um, 
that'll have some heavy stuff. I don't want to be super heavy duty. I don't want to be thinking about, you know, falling off or anything like that. So these are the anchor screws that I'm using to attach the uh, all the panels to the wall. I got them from Bunnings. Uh, they're a Ramset masonry screw, 7.5 by 80 mil, and um, they've so far been brilliant. I've put I, like this is a box of 100, and I've got uh, you know six left, so I put 94 of them into the this wall I'm building here, and um, the first wall. So all you do is you basically pre-drill a hole with an, with the um, hammer drill, and um, yeah, you just drill it in, and then you just get the driver bit, which comes in the box, and um, it's like a star pattern, and you just drive it into the wall. So um, of, of all the drills, like 94 holes I've put in there so far, I haven't had any of them strip out yet. Um, and you know, they, they're, it's going about maybe this far into the brick, um, and yeah, really fantastic. Because the alternative would be to use plastic anchors or something like that. Um, but a lot of mucking around, uh, whereas these are just simple, just punch them in and they can sink in so they, they sit flat and um, you don't have to worry about them, you know, protruding out and, and getting in the way. So yeah, fantastic. I've been real happy with these. Uh, I need to get another box now because uh, this one's nearly gone and I've still got another third wall to build. Um, but yeah, loving it. So with the batten frame all finished, I can now attach the 12mm plywood sheets. The first step is to cut notches in the top of the sheet so it fits up and around the timber joists that are holding up the shelf above. Yeah, trying to do that wall there was uh, quite challenging because the timber just doesn't bend, of course. I've got 20 kilos of sheet, so it's pretty awkward. It'd be easier if the place was empty, but sadly it's not, it's full of crap. It. Oh look, it does. Okay. So now I just have to wedge it up, jam it up to the top so it's just nice and tight up in there. And then screw it all on. I keep all the offcuts in this box and they come in pretty handy for this type of situation. So two of those, which is uh, about 70 mil high, I think, gets us almost exactly the right distance. A few millimeters, I'll just find a couple of wedges. These builders packers, perfect. Maybe slightly too thick. Maybe actually perfect, because I can wedge them under. Yeah, so it's pretty, pretty good. I'm not going to win any design awards with this, I know that. But as long as it's basically fairly clean and tidy, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I just need to screw it on and then uh, go to the next one. I've positioned the batten on the wall exactly in the center of the sheet. So all I need to do is measure in 600 mils from either side of the sheet and I'll be right into the batten behind it. 
I'm screwing the center ones first so that the sheet stays flat against the wall once it's all screwed on. So these are the screws that I'm using to attach the uh, sheets to the wall, um, basically through the plywood sheet and into the batten behind it. Uh, they're razor construction screws, uh, which I got from Screws Fasteners. And um, yeah, they're a really heavy duty, um, strong screw, which will actually drill nicely into hardwood, um, which the, all the framing and the trusses and everything are, are all hardwood. Now I'm only drilling into pine on the wall here, so these are kind of overkill, but I'd rather keep it consistent through the whole shed and just use the same fasteners all along. Um, I've got a box of uh, a thousand of them, so I'm not gonna run out anytime soon. And uh, yeah, they've got a square head, you see that there? Um, and they come with a couple of the dri square head driver bits that you need to drive them in. But yeah, brilliant. And also got longer ones, uh, which I use for attaching the battens in the ceiling to the hard wood framework up there. Um, same thing, just bigger basically. Excellent stuff. When it's all said and done, I want the screws along the wall to all be consistent and even. So I'm measuring from the top down and from the bottom up to the various screw positions. So I get consistent lines of screws across the whole wall. All right, one down, four and a bit to go. So I'm just putting up the second sheet here and um, this is where the problem of the fact that the, uh, the, the building is basically not straight. The wall is straight, uh, but the timber up here um, that's part of the truss is, you know, just a really rough bit of hardwood timber. It's about, you know, it's really crooked, it's, it's wobbly. And so trying to build something straight, you, you know, these sheets are all perfectly square and uh, they don't line up. This second sheet lines up beautifully down this side. You can see the, you know, the, the, um, the base of this shelf here is completely not straight at all. So basically this is level, this line here is level, but that bows up like that. What I could do is just trim, shave some of this one off so it goes up higher and sort of fills in, you know, basically taper this down so that I'm, I'm, you know, I've got the top of this sheet following the curve of this one. I'll cut the next sheet, I'll put that in place and I'll see where that lines up and then I'll, I'll work out what the best option is then. actually annoying about this is they've printed the uh, the branding for it on what I reckon is actually the better side. So we'll have that at the top. Won't exactly match the pattern we've got going over there but this area here will kind of be the backdrop for most of the uh, YouTube videos I make because this will be my work area and that'll be the background so I kind of want it to be fairly if, if anywhere in the room wants to be good it wants to be that spot there. I think I've got the two best pieces up there now, which is the main background. This will be mostly off the side. This one fits a lot better than the other one. You see it goes up nice and square and straight, which just makes the gap there look more obvious. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it over it. I'm just going to use a filler. Now look, I could have taken the sheet off and trimmed a bit more off at the top, but I'd just be being pedantic and no one's even going to notice anyway. I 
I didn't bother to film the last two sheets going up, but they both fit pretty well. The last thing I need to do is drill the holes for the power cables to come through. I've measured them out so they're all exactly evenly spaced along the back of the bench and I'll leave the cables ready for the sparky to fit off and connect to the mains. Alright, job done. I've uh, got all the five panels on the wall there. I haven't actually finished this corner yet but um, I won't bother about that for now because basically that's going to then get extended around here and along here. I'll finish that when I do that section there. We can actually uh, put in an electrical switchboard up here so that the whole garage has got its own uh, isolated power uh, just running a, a fat cable from here back to the meter box and um, and then the whole garage will be on its own circuit I've got the uh, four GPO holes down and the cables pulled through for the sparky to uh, hook up the uh, the GPOs and I'm actually not going to bother with these uh, these skirts down here um, there's really no point it's just it's it's only cosmetic and reality is all of this this entire thing is going to be covered with bench and, and everything else anyway you're not going to see anything basically below here um, so it's just pointless so the next thing I have to do is put the shelves I'm going to put in two shelves up here uh, like nice heavy duty shelves will hold you know anything that I put on them um, but the the timber I'm using for those shelves the ply is the offcut of the timber that's going for the bench top that's a 25 mil uh, ply floor board, so it's basically double the thickness of this. Nice heavy duty bench top, um, 1200 by 2400 sheet, and I'm cutting the 1200 down to 800, which will give me an 800 mil bench depth, which will be sort of you know about that depth. Nice, nice deep bench, and then the 400 piece that I'm cutting off will become the shelf, one of the shelves at the top. So, uh, and then I've got a couple of extra sheets which are going to get and cut into three strips, 400 by 2400 and um, yeah just run a shelf double shelf right along 40 deep 400 deep so it's going to be like nice and deep and that'll all be attached into the studs the battens that are behind there so um, super strong so that's the next step now I'm just waiting on Bunnings to come through with the uh, the ply floor sheets four sheets that I ordered uh, over a month ago and uh, there's a bit of a timber shortage on at the moment and uh, getting timbers proving to be hard work I luckily I ordered all this stuff months ago and I've had it sitting over here ready to go um, and they had it all in stock but yeah just finding some 25 mil ply has just been uh, real hard work so anyway I ordered it they said it'd be 10 days that was a month ago supposed to be in today maybe tomorrow so hopefully it'll come in tomorrow I'll duck down to Bunnings I'll pick it up and then I'll be able to get stuck into the next part which is the bench top and the shelves